Hey, what's up everybody? It's Mace, and I'm here with my video of everything that's wrong and the very few things that are right with the 1998 Sony and TriStar uh, Godzilla movie that was produced in the U.S. Now, obviously, it could have had a sequel if it wanted based on its box office, but we're better off that it didn't. And there's a lot of things that it did wrong, and obviously being such a huge Godzilla fan, I thought I'd go ahead and make a video pointing those things out. So without further ado, let's get started. So right from the start, that title sequence that obviously is trying to copy the Toho sequences of, uh, you know, nuclear explosions and everything, but then interspersing them with footage of uh, Komodo dragons and iguanas and other, other various lizards. I mean, what is it? It's trying to say that they all got combined together by nuclear radiation into Godzilla. I mean, that seems kind of odd. I mean, creating a new species maybe, but making Godzilla out of that, I, I, I don't know. No, I know that the uh, uh, Japanese movie said that it was radiation that created Godzilla, but at least he was already a kind of a huge dinosaur to start with, so... I kind of thought that was pretty bad in this movie. Alright, so the first and most obvious thing wrong with the Godzilla movie is the design of the actual monster himself. Now he looks more like a giant iguana, and he's kind of not really that scary. He's, I mean, Godzilla should be terrifying, and I mean, this is the kind of thing that you wouldn't be scared of unless you saw in person. And even then, since he didn't act like he was going out of his way to hurt people or try to eat anyone, it didn't really seem all that scary. Um, but the design is just really, really bad on him. And it's kind of almost laughable because people like have iguanas as pets and everything, and so I don't know how this was ever supposed to be scary. And this is kind of your sign that it, it was for sure going to be like a family comedy style movie, which is absolutely what it ended up being. Next thing that's really wrong with it is the uh, fact that Godzilla was created by French testing in the French Polynesian Islands. Uh, now I don't know if it's just because Roland Emmerich seemed to be good friends with the government or not, but uh, it's, it seemed like they really should have had it that he was created by the U.S. nuclear tests in the 50s instead. But I guess they kind of wanted to avoid that and the radioactive contamination and everything that the Americans had caused during that time, so they decided to blame it on the French because they didn't think it would be an issue. But storyline-wise, it just doesn't work out because it's not really believable that the French would have done all that. Another big issue is the lack of destruction, aside from what was caused by the uh, U.S. fighter planes. Now, I'm sure if Godzilla actually went through downtown New York, he'd end up doing a hell of a lot more damage than he did in the movie. And I mean, even in Independence Day, Roland Emmerich made a huge deal of more damage and even destroyed the White House. So I just, I don't really get why they didn't have Godzilla destroying more stuff, except that the fact that they didn't want him to be scary for kids and families that went to the movie, which ended up working against it in the long run. And also, kind of a big one, Roland Emmerich didn't want Godzilla to have his atomic breath, so... They pushed and pushed, and he ended up just sticking with fire breath, which also made no sense, considering that he was supposedly a giant, you know, radioactive uh, iguana from the French Polynesian Islands. You'd think that he would have something different than just fire breath. I mean, it makes absolutely no sense, except that unless it's like some sort of digestive thing, but he seemed to do it on demand, so it just doesn't make sense. And then there's the obvious in-your-face product placement by Bumblebee Tuna. They did try to shy away from it by having it focus on the Japanese version of it, but then they had the Hershey's Kisses in all those scenes. And I'm kind of surprised they didn't have Godzilla smashing a Taco Bell because Taco Bell was running a huge Godzilla advertising campaign at this time. And they even had Happy Meals toys for it. You know, and then there's the Godzilla being this huge wuss that lays eggs and then ends up running away from everything. I mean, he did chase a few of those fighter planes, but for the most part, he just ran away and hid underground. So, I mean, that's a huge change from the Godzilla that we've seen in the Japanese movies, who actively goes out and tries to destroy the things and everything. But I guess, again, it's a family movie and you don't want to scare him, but it's exactly the point of the Godzilla movie and why it didn't work. 
Then there's basing the mayor and his assistant character on uh, Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert. I mean, I thought that was one of the dumbest things that I've ever heard or seen in an entire movie. And uh, why you would do it off of a movie reviewer unless you were trying to get the movie reviewed well so that it ends up, uh, you know, doing well in theaters, I guess. I don't know, but I thought that was incredibly stupid. And of course, there's pretty much the entire soundtrack was just basically your big dome adventure comedy style music. Uh, I mean, it was totally bombastic and not anything at all like the uh, music that we'd heard from Akira Fube. So, I mean, it was just I'm mean, not scary and didn't set the scene for any of the Godzilla scenes to be terrifying. But I mean, again, family friendly movie, and I promise that's the last time I'll mention that. You know, they started off the movie well, they had a lot of Asian and Japanese characters on that fishing boat, and there weren't really any subtitles or anything, and it seemed like it was going to be, you know, just your normal Godzilla movie, but then, boom, all the Asian characters disappeared for the rest of the movie, except for that frightened Japanese guy. And it's pretty weird, because I honestly think that Audrey could have easily been played by a Japanese woman, and it would have made complete sense in terms of the story and what added to the movie, but... I mean, that's just my thought about it. Okay, so before I get to the big two, one of the ones last few that I want to mention is the fact that they had the entire story pretty much told to the audience through uh, a Simpsons voice actor who was obviously trying to be funny and comedic through his role. And I mean, I just I, I thought that was really stupid. I mean, they did have brief flashes from other news channels, but the newsman that they picked was just obviously the wrong choice for it. So the first of the really big ones for me was just about how pretty much every single role in the movie for what you'd want it to be was completely miscast. I mean, Matthew Broderick and all the other actors, including the dad from the Transformers and the Ghostbusters movie, I mean, just wrong. And uh, the way they delivered their roles was just wrong and boring, stilted, and I mean, just not funny. Uh, and definitely not scary and didn't fit the tone of what I think the movie should have been at all. And I've never ever seen a movie before or since then that has been completely miscast from top to bottom as much as that, that was. But again, I guess that was just what Sony wanted at the time to, you know, because of the popularity of the actors that they had in it. But I still thought that it was just one of the worst cast movies ever. But probably what's the worst part of the, the actual movie itself is the fact that Godzilla gets easily beaten by being stuck in a bridge and then shot by human weapons. Not a special oxygen, oxygen destroyer or an atomic blast or, you know, attacked by another monster and destroyed all the way down to clumps of himself, you know, or like a plane being flown into him. He uh, just gets shot three times on each side by missiles from, you know, an airplane after he gets stuck in a bridge and boom, that's it for Godzilla. I mean, that's not even believable at all. It obviously shows you how little thought they put into actually finishing it off. They're probably like, ooh, just this shot will look really cool, so we'll put it in the movie at the end. But yeah, it's just one of the most poorly executed deaths I've ever seen in it any of these Godzilla monster movies, and why it probably shouldn't even count as being on the list. Alright, so for what it got right, it's not a lot, and uh, to start, I'll pick that John Renault is the one very, very bright spot in a very poorly cast movie. I mean, he did have a few comedic moments, but they would still have fit in a serious movie. And I mean, he is just an amazing actor, you saw him in Leon the Professional, and he was also in the video game Onimusha 3, Demon Siege, but I thought that he did a good job with uh, kind of what he was working with, and I'm kind of glad that he's at least there to, you know, show some seriousness to what's going on. So the textures and sound effect work was also very good, uh, and ended up being a lot better than the work that was done for the uh, Zilla creature in the 2004 Final Wars movie that came out of Japan. Or of course, the old tuna head gets beaten really quick by the real Godzilla. Kind of, uh, you know, shoved in the face of Sony and TriStar there. But, yeah. Um, I mean, for a 90s movie, the textures were just pretty great. And I, 
as far as that part of it is concerned, I can't really complain much about it. So the only other good thing I can really give it is the fact that um, the director of photography that Roland Emmerich, you know, seems to work with on his movies, you know, whatever it is, tends to frame a shot really well, and this is shown a bunch of times in the Godzilla movie. Just, uh, it, I mean, by those alone, it, I mean, obviously they probably showed a bunch of those in the early trailers and everything. You would have thought the movie would have been great, but nope. But still, I mean, the photography work was absolutely phenomenal and deserved a much better movie around it. Oh, having a reporter and scientist as leads also seemed like a really smart choice and was a nice tie-in to the old Japanese movie. So I, I agree with that. I just don't agree with the actors that played them. Like I said, Audrey could have and probably should have been Japanese. Anyway, that's my thoughts about the 1998 Godzilla movie. I just thought I'd share them with you since I just watched it the other day and being such a Godzilla fan like I am. Anyway, uh, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like or subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I will show you, see you in my next video.